the towering mountains keep on growing stronger into the new millennium. Springboard for regional progress. Live up to the promise. San Fernando City, beautiful city, shine on up your plan. Greetings to the officials of the World Bank, guests, and friends. I am Mary Jane Ortega, former mayor of the city of San Fernando, La Union, Philippines, from 1998 to 2007. And I am here to share with you our practices in the city of San Fernando in partnership with the World Bank. I was asked by Alan Rothman of the World Bank to talk to you about our engineered sanitary landfill. And the question came up, why did we in the city and I as the mayor take it up as a priority project? The previous mayor joined the SWE project of the World Bank through the Department of Environment and Natural Resources. Do you know that out of 1,500 local government units in the Philippines, only 138 said they wanted to join SWEEP? And then they were asked, please come up with a city council resolution. And only seven of us answered yes. This was then when I became a mayor and I was invited by the USAID to see the different facilities in the United States. The World Bank then helped us to come up with a feasibility study funded by the Canadian International Development Agency. Then after the pre-feasibility study, I was the only one out of the seven who decided to take out a loan from a window of the World Bank, which was through the Department of Finance. And so we went through a series of consultations. The problem with the Department of Finance of the Philippines was that they did not have any expert on solid waste management. And so they kept on getting consultants after consultants, and this dragged on from 1998 to 2005. And finally, I approached Mr. Ray Ancheta of the World Bank and said, could you please make me an appointment to see Mr. Christian Delvoix? And uh, when I met with Christian Delvoix, he asked Vijay Jagannathan, who was then heading the Middle East program, if he could lend Alan Rothman 
to the Philippines so that together we could be helped to make the terms of reference for a design, build, and operate. We even invited a lawyer from Canada to help us with these terms of reference. It was a long journey, but it was worthwhile. And we borrowed 162 million pesos at that time to have two cells to handle 15 years of garbage of the city of San Fernando. But I would like to share with you the fact that we now have the waste from 1997's controlled dump site of about 90,000 metric tons in the first cell. And we now have the second cell being used for the present and perhaps another more eight years for of the future's garbage. Now the next question, what brought this about? Our vision of the city development strategies, another project of the World Bank, was to be a botanical garden city of the north. Botanical garden being a 20 hectare botanical garden, which was our symbol for the environment. And we wanted to plant 1 million trees and we planted 1 million 340,000 trees in nine years. We wanted solid waste management and that is why we have this engineered landfill. And by the way, we won as the best material recovery facility in the Philippines from one of our villages. We are also committed to clean air, clean water, everything that has to do with the environment. We shifted our tricycles from two-stroke engine tricycles to four-stroke engines. And the most important project of all of this was the sanitary engineered landfill. We have been able to come up with a 10 hectare engineered landfill and through this design, build and operate, we had a consortium or a joint venture of a Canadian firm called Conestoga Rovers with a local firm of the Chanbon Pin. This first cell was done with a one meter clay liner and we found out that it was very labor intensive. And so the contractor said, at no additional cost to us, they would like to offer that the second cell would be using HDPE or plastic liners. And this gave us the added volume needed to lengthen the life of the landfill. With proper recycling, with reducing and also proper composting, we also have lengthened this life of the landfill through the design, through the technology, and through the proper operations of the facility, in spite of the fact that collection of garbage was even widened in the city. The Philippine government at that time did not have any incentive for brown projects. They had incentives for green projects, that is if you plant and reforest, for blue projects if you want to conserve marine life, but none for sanitation nor for solid waste management. And so we went ahead borrowing money without any grant component. And you may wonder why we did this and we continued to borrow even without any grant component. Because I really believe that proper solid waste management is imperative for coming up with a progressive city. If you don't have a clean city, how can it be progressive? And so we said, with 162 million, with five years moratorium and 15 years to pay, which is already a very soft loan, you would already be getting the benefits of proper solid waste management even before you have paid for it. And so we 
then felt that at that present time, this was the way to go. And I would like to share with you one text message that I received from a citizen of San Fernando right after a big storm called Ondoy affected the Philippines. We had the floods with garbage floating all over, and when the water was done, the garbage was still there. The text message said, Mayor, thank you for coming up with our engineered landfill. Thank you with coming up with proper solid waste management. We do not have the problems of the other cities that are now being felt, especially in Manila and in the other places of the Philippines. And I guess this is one of the reasons why we need capacity building on financing. They should remember that financing, especially from soft loans, is something to be taken advantage of. But I understand that in politics, the opposition would usually use this against you and say, oh, this administration left us a legacy of debts. But I answered, yes, it is true. I borrowed money, but look at what we now have. We have less diseases and we're a very active member of the World Health Organization. And through this active engagement with the World Bank, they gave me arrows to see what were the other loans that were available. And so we borrowed 11 million pesos and the city has to pay only 5.5 million in 20 years because of the five years moratorium and the 15 years to pay. But we would like to say that we would be able to achieve the Millennium Development Goals where maternal mortality rate went down to zero. Infant mortality rate is down and most importantly, we have healthy citizens. We also borrowed funds for classrooms at 50% grant, and we were able to improve the survival rate of our children in elementary schools. But all in all, what do these projects show? that with proper knowledge of financing, with proper networking with the World Bank and other international agencies, we would even be able to access other programs aside from solid waste management. We would be able to address the programs and problems of urbanization. And as we know, this is now one of the problems of the world today. I have been invited even after I ceased to be a mayor, and it has been six years now that I've been a private citizen. When I was elected Secretary General of CityNet, a regional association of cities in Asia Pacific, we addressed problems of urbanization, and I saw that one of the major problems in developing countries is solid waste management. I tell the officials of the cities I work with that it is not bad to borrow as long as you see to it that the money you borrow is used properly and that there is no corruption. And through transparency, you would be able to show people that what money you borrowed is used efficiently and properly. And this then is why we say Years after having been a mayor, I am very flattered, complimented, when I'm still asked to talk to you on why we decided to go into solid waste management as a priority project. One of the things I said was, one good thing about being a partner of the World Bank is that if you pass the standards that they set, that means that you are on the right path. 
And just when you're able to hurdle all of these benchmarks that they have placed, they would even raise it further and further. And so you strive for excellence. This is what we have to do in local governments. We cannot rest on our laurels. We have to continue working so that urbanization, which is now here in this world, will be addressed. We can find the solutions if we can find partners who will be willing to work with us because they know that we have good urban governance. And that means we are accountable for whatever we borrow and that whatever we borrow, we spend properly in a transparent manner and there is equity in our governance. But most importantly, we have the participation of the people. When I was re-elected, after talking about this engineered landfill, about borrowing money for the landfill, for the schools, for the lying-in clinics, I was rewarded by the people when they gave me 92.5% of their votes. And this, therefore, is one of the things that I would like to share with you. That with good governance, with good partners like the World Bank, we can deliver and the people will definitely be behind us. Thank you for listening, and I'd like to say, Mabuhay from the Philippines, long live.